Okay, uh, this morning I'm going to make a video to explain a couple of the principles that are part of the uh, fundamental base for understanding everything about everything about the world, about life, about uh, reasoning our social problems, uh, arguing, discussing and debating uh, civil issues, uh, political situations. Uh, it is the base that pretty much creates the the playing field uh, upon which everything else becomes a reality that we experience. It is essential to understand this in order to actually go anywhere with any of the things that we argue about society or about world conditions. And it is that uh, the world, human existence, life, life, our world, is uh, essentially made up of fundamentally uh, divided in two areas or um, defined in two in two areas one is what I call the spontaneous living reality the free reality the natural organic reality and the other one is the written hard uh, or recorded reality these two exist together and they basically constitute the existential experience of life. Anything you want to argue, you have to consider these two. And the way I'm, you can understand them better, it's a bit like, um, like a computer that has hardware and software. The software is run by the hardware. Except that in a computer, um, I mean, I except that in the world, the difference is that the software makes the hardware. So there isn't an outside force that handles these two. You could open a door to a, theore a, th a theological discussion about a third element, which would be God. Um principally God in heaven, God elsewhere in the universe, the creator of, of the world as we know it. Um, but we'll not, that would basically cancel out anything that we could possibly talk about because it's God, so we don't include that. What we say is um, software is our spontaneous selves and the hardware, or the hard reality, the recorded reality, um, which is analogous to the hardware of the computer. I know I'm a little lost, but I'm not lost. I, I'm going around in circles, but I'll, I'm going to get back on it. Uh, so the difference with the computer is that we create the hardware. The hardware is everything, or rather, I don't like calling it hardware and software uh, in actuality. Um, I call it the, the hard, unchanging, confining reality. Uh, when we write down a law, or when we make a cutting knife, it is, uh, or when we create a medication that cures something, or when we create good things, when we build a school building, uh, or when we install in that school building, uh, in that school building, the systems, the methods that were studied in hard-lined books that have been already written and read several times by other people, we're referring to and we're using the hard reality. The ones that use that hard reality are us. We will, with every second of the day potentially have the the uh, the choice of continuing to use this mouse 
or maybe I'll try to f uh, fiddle with the f fiddle with the computer and try to see if I can move the cursor differently by pulling cables and tweaking my laptop. Who makes that decision is the soft or the living free reality. In this case, my my ingenuity, my consciousness. Um, an apple uh, will fall on the floor from a tree. It will hit a ground that is unchanging. The ground is made of cement. It's mostly hard reality, although there's a part of it that gets eroded with water and over hundreds of years, which has to do with its soft, changing, free reality. The apple hits the ground and it will uh, always uh, mash up differently to another apple that falls in the same place because it is all soft or free reality. There's no hard reality uh, regarding the apple, about the apple. Okay, so you more or less understand the concept, but this is, however, um, all encompassing. This is everything. And the reason we run into complications where we don't, people usually don't win arguments, problems continue on in the world, huh? why we're basically stuck and not being able to fix our problems, where we have a good idea, it becomes hard reality that governs uh, some of hard reality and some of soft reality, and yet the problem never seems to go away or it goes away temporarily and then it resurfaces. Why does this happen? Why is the world still uh, churning in its own unchangeability and resurfacing, regenerating the same natured problems. Because we don't have a grip on this as a discourse. We don't perfectly, in every argument, in every discussion, say, well, yeah, when we're, uh, let's say, talking to somebody else, the other person concurs with how we're resolving or understanding the discussion. Along the way, we're not both including the the part that would say, well, yeah, no, but that wouldn't work because this is unchanging and that is unpredictable. And so that unchanging and that unpredictable, which would influence what we seem to be forecasting will be a success in our discussion, never gets included in the conversation. We ignore it. We basically ignore the the fusion of hard reality and soft reality or living and free organic free reality and um, hard recorded reality we ignore this fusion in how we understand the world and all you have to do is open Facebook to see the the, 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 sand, the stupidity in which in the ways we argue how we we don't really get where the other person was coming from ever I mean this happens in real life imagine in in, in written form where you don't even see the person's face we're basically assuming we, we think we we have a, an idea and a character definition for the person we're reading and we just assume a whole bunch of stuff and it's all ridiculous how people argue in, uh, in Facebook so you can imagine how um, um, how uh, it is in real life I mean well I was making the opposite point I think so this is not something easy. I'm not saying that we should become a species that should be super, super intelligent and all of a sudden we'll know with every situation that we produce in a discussion what part of it is is a recorded reality and which part is free reality. Uh, we can't. This is, uh, our, this is not how we evolve. This is not how we have evolved to experience life. We have uh, evolved our brains have evolved to experience life in ignorance of this just freely and we are the ones that later started generating hard reality. Animals don't, uh, very few named beavers, you know, they build a dam or um, there's a little bit of uh, family structure that gets passed between social animals, you know, and, and you see the family structures are, and so that's some kind of hint of them instructing each other to the next generation of how to behave and that could constitute what later uh, human beings have evolved as you know, a book on how to run your family or what morals to have in, in at your 
place of employment and all this gets written and then people study it you know so uh, but in general you could say that animals don't live the uh, hard recorded reality and people do well so um, actually I was going to make this video to explain something else but I think this is a part of it what happened is that I, I got lost into this um, because um, it's, it's, it's sort of something you have to know in order to explain what I wanted to explain and now I'm uh, I kind of lost it I'm going to pause I'm going to pause and see if it comes back and if not I'll just make another video okay it's back okay I remembered what it was um, also to take into consideration and when we talk and we understand about the world we live in and we argue and we understand social situation when we want to understand social cultural political situations and people argue which is happening a lot today in social networks people are arguing about what to do how, what to what we expect others should believe what we try to uh, tell people we try to tell them they're wrong about or we just insult them you know but basically that's what that's what we people are trying to do is tell each other how to how things are supposed to be uh, and this has been going on since before Facebook and social networks of course um, to consider is that everything that you think everything you think has been taught learned expressed for you to see um, told uh, heard, studied, uh, read somewhere. Did I say read already? Everything that we think has been learned from the world. So when this is, uh, it seems like, yeah, so what, right? But if you think about this, a lot of people, when, when people argue, they don't realize that we are, um, we have only learned things from other people. So nobody is to be blamed or crucified or an idiot because of anything they say. They simply have put together in their minds, uh, and our minds are an experience, are a combination of the written and the living or the free and the um, recorded reality that exists in our thinking expression and the expression of our thinking. Um, so you know it's basically what I'm trying to say is that the the field is all laid out for us to actually be empowered to change our world and fix our problems not have the things happen that we don't want to see happen and correct and understand better what we were wrong about before it's all possible because we only learn through what we learn <laughs> we only learn by what the world and others educate us to believe um, it's that simple so this is important to understand because when somebody writes something that is for example a correction of something that was wrongly believed before or a new idea and people want to argue that they don't argue at you they don't say you mislearned that because you believe that when you heard or when they taught you this you interpreted now as this or that we attack the person's reasoning which ta gets taken personally so again i'm saying um and, and and the person of course has emotions and reacts personally and then to hell goes the the any progress or any advance in that discussion so um, yeah, again it's us something difficult to always keep in mind but if we understand this notion um, we should instantly be diffused from being aggressive and hostile towards the person towards the persona or the the human capabilities of that person we wouldn't 
see, we wouldn't feel, it wouldn't make sense to insult anybody. Uh, because they're simply trying to put together the best they can what they in turn have learned which they may never they may not even be aware of themselves that uh, was simply taught to them to believe if you take this um, and a lot of times we could simply say you only say that because that's what you learn from uh, from the, our current society, our current culture, which is now bent on teaching this or that. Um, so yeah, okay. So these these two these two things. I think there was actually it's it was another uh, there was another thing. It was the actual thing I wanted to make the video about. Is still I still didn't um, come to. Uh, but I realized that this second part, this second aspect, uh, was necessary for that original idea I had, and I remembered it, and I added it, and now I don't remember the, the actual, the original one, the one that, um, which I'm not even sure it's going to come back, so I'm going to pause again, <laughs> I'm going to pause again, and um, if I remember it, good, if not, I think these two things uh, should go towards towards bettering uh, our our reasoning base fairly fairly substantially. All right, thanks. No, I I can't I can't remember. Uh, maybe there wasn't really something too well defined, but I'm gonna end with. Um, sort of a, a, a bit of wisdom that applies to all of this in arguments. I've been experiencing a lot of arguing, arguing uh, by keyboard form, of course. Um, most people actually, if not everybody, um, because they respond to the overall ultimate, how can I say this, absolute truth that we are first, our subconscious is aware, our source is first the collective, that our source for the existence of even all, of, all of individuals is the collective, creates for a subconscious reasoning environment that when you explain to somebody in graceful tact without in other words without ever making them feel like they're wrong or stupid or they didn't you know get things or they're worthless or what have you um, why they have come to believe wrongly what they believe and you succeed in that, which is very difficult, um, you find that people actually, because we're a collective first, are predisposed to trust and believe you. Seems hard to believe. But because the collective, the ultimate, the supreme goal of life is to maintain the species united, um, as a collective, all s the the spirit of all uh, in the spirit in all the things that we say at the source are for a plurality, a collective. So, in other words, thought does not ever really start with the individual, n nor does language. Language. Uh, words and definition you say this means that and that no it doesn't that word means something else well you are wrong because this word means da 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 and I can prove it to you it's written in the dictionary ultimately you could push that argument to where whoever decided on the use of the language that ended up getting written a certain definition in the dictionary had to talk to somebody else about it see our language and our speaking did not evolve um, by a single by a, I want to make my little hand gesture as well by a single person I can't reach 
uh, by a single person. It evolved its 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 optimal uh, description, life description, living description of language and speaking, is again that that is sourced in a collective, which means words only mean what they mean because one person said it and another person heard it and confirmed to the person who said it that indeed they heard what they said and they both agreed on what that word means. That mutually shared environment is the source itself of that word. So language and speaking is not something that originates in a single person but ultimately, and if we want to change anything, we will find that we will also look for somebody else to concur. Because the sounds don't mean anything, the words that they embody don't mean anything, unless uh, they are agreed upon two minds with two sets of vocal cords and two mouths, rather a mouth and an ear, a mouth and an ear together, to concur on, on it. Okay, so um, I lost track of what I was saying, what, what the reason why I wanted to point out. Uh, I went on a tangent to say that um, conceptual understanding of, of, of uh, social and uh, human of the social and human condition of the social human condition starts in the collective for anything that you want to talk about we do things for the collective right i think that's what it is so and we lose sight of that we start in uh, plurality we start in plurality and some have argued this is god god is the plural god is a source that would be the knowledge of god um in the plurality, and, and that is not talking about God in heaven, our creators, which is separate to our maximum optimal capacity, which is a, a, a limit somewhere out there in, a, in several thousand years, perhaps. Um, I forgot again. Okay, well, I think all of that kind of has some some content and some some interesting ideas education we learn everything from the collective yeah well it all in our in arguments it all goes um, the intention is always ultimately that it serves everybody and some people argue and say well no as long as these people or that people what we're not aware of, we're not aware of that uh, subconscious sensibility in our sort of our, our spirit, spirited reasoning that we're actually heading towards things. Government is created for a plurality for all people. Uh, religion in a more obvious way. Um, so, and we are the, I think that's what it was ba that I was getting at, we are the masters of our own creations. So we, we created this software which is the living soft reality of the apple that falls off the tree in our spontaneous uh, initiative or desire to do things our own way or make something new, um, created, created, invented the rules, the everything, the sciences, the, the human sciences that explain uh, if a human being's psychology can be rehabilitated without needing to go to jail. Uh, these are things that are not uh, ordained by God as in separating people as good people and bad people and therefore making our arguments very shallow. And, you know, well, some people will always want to kill, or there will always be war, you know, and these kinds of conclusions, these kind of banal conclusions that frustrate people that are that have a little bit of intelligence that, that somehow know they want to, they, they can go further, and, they, and people just want to drop anchor, and that we're, some of us are born bad, or there is evil in the world, and this sort of thing, which is not true. 
Not true, because we are born um, in the in the in the conception of life, and life's uh, first. Um, Aside from the reason each creature has evolved, each plant, each animal, each living being has evolved to take the form it has, its first uh, directive is to uh, be able to reproduce itself, to make more of itself. This means growth. So inherently in our source, we come, from, we come with growth and expansion and giving so if the question needs to be answered, uh, are we born bad or are we born good? Uh, one would have to conclude that we are born in, uh, in abundance, in love, in, in thriving, in wanting to nurture and heal, nurture ourselves and heal, expand, proliferate, proliferate, make more of us, everything, all living beings. And to this, this species, mankind, uh, endowed with the intelligence uh, reasoning it does, um, has created ways, has m developed what I have, what I have, which for now I can I can re I can um, refer to again as our recorded hard reality, invented things, tools, um, and written morals to guide written ethics, written about uh, these are sort of esoteric uh, conceptual ideas of how, of how to order our societies more harmoniously and then we have the psychological sciences which pretend to understand, which they do to a great extent, understand how the mind naturally works and so we have an explanation you know, for psychology, because the mind is seeking this, and if this instead happens to it, then we develop trauma, a complex, or we develop a sense of overly calm, overly confident, or what have you, that psychology may explain. Both of, of these, religion and psychology, they're all productions of our hard uh, recorded reality. We are the creators of it. We are the creators of the world. Mankind is the creator of everything you see around you that mankind has made. Buildings, anything that's written in ink, a drawing, a science, a discovery, or even a philosophy. And that means that nobody is impeding us from saying, oops, that was wrong, let's change it right away. Everything can, sh has, can potentially be changed right away by mankind as its creator. Everything that's wrong, every government system, every uh, f uh, medicine formula, every philosophy of thought can be changed and some are right on. Some we hit it on the nail. They shouldn't change and we change them because we're not very good at being in control of the success of our of this combination of, uh, of recorded and natural reality. But it is the soft reality, that which can't change, the, the free reality. We can't make a river, I mean we can, but uh, we can't sort of uh, magically, organically just blow a, a river off course. It takes eons for a river to change its course or a mountain to rise or a, a tree has its lifespan and so do we. Um, yet, the irony and the thing that, the, the, the notion that we should rise to the occasion in seizing is that we can change tomorrow, a lot of people get confused, because you can change tomorrow, it sounds daunting, because everything, myself, they're actually asking my, my soft, organic, free reality as well, no dummy, what we actually mean to say, and nobody has been able to explain, we can change anything, we can change anything we want that we have created is the hard reality. Nothing is stopping us from uh, turning streets into um, sort of sand pebbles, sand pebble roads. 
actually. It's in, you know, you know what I mean? Instead of asphalt. Nothing is stopping us from saying, oops, we went that, we went wrong in thinking that, um, in thinking that, uh, two women raising a child is equal and identical to a, m a mother and a father raising a child. Uh, perhaps we have intentionally or for some reason deliberately pushed and pr um, fueled on by other reasons have pushed aside where uh, an area of psychology that we were almost ready to deliver those times, those instances, and in fact we did in many areas of psychology, those things that are pretty much a description of how uh, life or the, the free natural world really functions in our psychology, um, some principles are actually there. We are, we, in psychology we talk about how the child's interaction with the world will become uh, will be a result of how the parents raised it. Well, you know, this is not natural, free, organic reality. Uh, we s we're saying it, and yet we are describing something that seems to be pretty much in correspondence to what natural, free, spontaneous reality would be without ever having discovered the science. And then we would come to describe it one day, and somebody would say, uh, looks like how child, a child behaves with in society is a result of how its parents taught it, behaved, how much love or how they treat it in the, in the developmental phase and their, their need for nurturing and all this. Um, it turns out that psychology was saying that. Uh, and so in many instances, human scientists are right on. In medicine, there's probably a whole area, things that will in a th 2,000 years or 10,000 years still will be pretty much the same that we discovered. And then a vast majority of it, let's say 80% of what is our created or produced um, hard reality sciences are off or are taking us the wrong way. Um, so to, have a, to get a grip on this in itself is very important. If we, uh, and you know, it's starting to sound a little, uh, saying, you know, some people might say this challenge is, it's an agnostic, it's an atheistic discourse. Uh, no, no, because I believe that we were created. I believe that uh, this is all within what we are uh, free to um, run our own world with. So it's not atheistic or agnostic. Um, it doesn't talk much about describing and saying what God is. It doesn't presume to say what, um, how we should think of God or uh, how we should tell, e teach each other that we should believe about God. But it definitely is not agnostic or atheistic. So, okay, now I am. That does seem pretty conclusive. It has a conclusive air to it right there. Oops, this thing doesn't work. It's stuck. Okay. Uh, ciao. Thank you. Thanks for listening. I, I hope it was I hope it was good.